everyone welcome back to the channel best hit songs of 2022 um i didn't really know how to approach this video and i still don't really know if i'm approaching this in the correct way i'm gonna get this out there 2022 was a weird year for me in terms of listening to popular music i started following it very strongly at the beginning of the year and then i just kind of fell off because i got busy with school and other things came up and i just didn't care anymore and a couple times during the year, I did try to stay on top of the hits, and even knowing what hits were popular was kind of difficult. So I was going into this a little bit blind. I was aware of at least most of the songs I needed putting on this list, but this was one of those years where I had to look through multiple gear in lists and just put the songs together that felt the most representative to me. I'm going to guarantee you that this list is going to be very different from most people's lists. And I'm also not trying to put certain picks on here just because other critics justified it. Um, so I want to very quickly explain that I am going by global hits here also. So for the sake of variety, I've also started including the global 200 year end list. And that will be very important going forward. Also, I'm not including like old songs like Bohemian Rhapsody that always make that year end list, but I'm talking about new songs that weren't on the US year end that were otherwise massive smashes in other regions are counting for this list. Also, this was like incredibly hard to rank and depending on the day, I kind of feel differently like these rankings could be shuffled around a lot like one day one song would be my favorite and one day a different song would be my favorite and also this was a really hard list to make. I had to make a lot of really brutal cuts and you guys are definitely not going to be happy with some of the choices I did end up going with, but we're gonna do it anyway. I've never been afraid to share my opinions on the internet and we're gonna do it. So without further ado... great right about their time by lizzo is genuinely one of the songs which i understand why everyone loves and i love it too lizzo has effortless energy the song is fun it's loose it's got a great disco groove lizzo has a ton of charisma the rap part on the second verse is really fun and basically everything about the song is just great and pure critic bait and i came so close to putting this song at number 10 on the list but there was a song that edged it out and you guys are not going to be happy with this one. Okay, so I don't want to go into a long, exhaustive justification of this song. For that, I say please revert to Lizette G's best hit songs of 2022. They did a much better job covering this than I ever could, but I do love Boyfriend by Dove, Cam Dove Cameron, and honestly, I see why so many people hate this song. The production is overblown as hell, the lyrics are a little cringy, and everything about this just screams Riverdor Riverdale core, whatever that means. I don't fucking watch Riverdale, I think it's stupid. I love dark, overblown ass production. I've always loved shit like this. It's my biggest guilty pleasure in all of music. Things that are so overblown that they shouldn't work and they don't work, and yet I still can't help loving it. Also, the lyrics are snarky and fun, and this is not a female treat you better. You know, everything was said in their segment about this song, just... There's nothing wrong or offensive with the lyrics. I'm speaking as a queer person. Of course, if you find these lyrics offensive or if you're uncomfortable by them, I'm not trying to tell you that you're you're wrong or you're bad, but personally, people are treating the song way harder because it's a gay song. And the fact that it's a gay song is part of the reason why it's on the list. Again, the blowing up production is just another element, which of course, it's something that would appeal to only me and a few other people, but I don't give a shit. This song's great, even though it's terrible. I wasn't able to get 
through all of Un Verano Sin Ti because that's is a very long album and I definitely see why Bad Bunny is one of the most popular artists of the year and just in general. But I'm gonna be honest, a lot of his stuff doesn't really work for me that well. Yeah, part of it could be because I don't speak Spanish, but that's clearly not an issue because I like plenty of other foreign language music and Rosalia's Motomani was a really good album also. But honestly, there was one song which absolutely hit this year. Un Verano Sin Ti is just fun. There's really no higher justification for putting this on the list. It's not some sort of profound statement of music or lyricism, but this is just a song you throw on when you want to have fun and dance, and that's it. I love how hard-hitting this beat is compared to a lot of boring reggaeton beats, and everything about this is just so fun, and this is the song which kind of made me understand Bad Bunny's appeal. Well, besides the Kiti last year, but you get the point. That chorus hits so hard every time. Yeah, so anyway, Bad Bunny, most popular artist of the year probably, and honestly, I do see why, and this song is absolutely great. Especially this breakdown. I see why people wouldn't like something like this, but personally, this is absolutely my cup of tea and I enjoy it. Next. put a country song on my best list and I don't like country music like at all it's not a genre that appeals to me outside of like I like Marin Mars but especially male country artists I just have never found any male country songs that really appeal to me except God's Country for some reason and this song is kind of the opposite of that something in the orange is one of those tracks which is super laid back in terms of being very um stark sparse instrumental but it still has this sinister brooding feeling about it, like, this sense, um, it, it feels like a song you play on a really cold day in November, and it's just got this great sense to it. As a breakup song, it's incredibly well done, and has this great sense of regret, and it doesn't overdo its vocal delivery. Zach Bryan sounds really good on this, and, um, I just think that the song is absolutely delicious. There were a lot of other country songs this year which were made way more in the lane of being upbeat or in that type. And I do like overblown shit shows like God's Country, but this is great also and honestly way better. The subtlety of this song and the subdued nature of it is what makes the song great in my opinion. So that's why I ranked this song here on the list. But as great as this song is, it is still a country song, and it's just not my genre, so I really couldn't end up ranking it any higher. But the song is still fucking fantastic. And moving on to something that is my genre... Okay, I can guarantee you that no one else will have this song on their year end list because most people don't use the global charts. They either just use the US charts, UK, Canada, or they use um, some other alternate chart to Billboard or something like US Spotify or anything like that. This song is a song which made the global 200. It made the global 200. So it qualifies. This is the only K-pop song to make the Global 200 that qualified that wasn't by Blackpink or BTS. But... Getting to talk about a K-pop girl group song on a list like this is just incredible. And I really encourage more people to include the global charts in their rankings just because there's so much more variety when it comes to this stuff. But anyway, um, for those who don't listen to K-pop and don't know anything about this group, I've, I'll give you a little bit of background. So a few years ago, there was a show, a survival show, something similar to uh, 
American Idol or something like that, where a group gets formed at the end. And there was this group show called Produce 101. And there was this group called Eyes One, which came out of the show. So Eyes One had a two year contract. And after the group split up, all 12 members of the group went their separate ways and did solo stuff. Two members of Eyes One ended up going to Starship Entertainment, which is a company that manages other K-pop groups like, Mon like the popular boy group Monsta X. And this group came out of that with some trainees from their group and also two members of Eyes One. They debuted in the end of last year with the song 11, which was not a hit. Still really great and absolutely a kick kill kicker track. And this year they released Love Dive, which went kind of viral. And I think that's why the song's on the list because Spotify is in Korea now. So yes, the song is incredibly popular in its native country. But also, Love Dive managed to reach overseas a bit into just people streaming it. And I think that's great. And honestly, this is just what pop music should sound like, in my opinion. This dance break, you obviously can't watch it on your screen, but the musical element of it is one of the best parts of the song. Now, obviously, um, K-pop is an extremely performance-oriented genre, so just playing the song doesn't often do these things justice, but this is a song which holds up really well on its own as just a really genuinely great, fun, simple pop song, and I really couldn't ask for more. Also, check out After Like, it's really good. in the year where I was doing this monthly chart, my top 20 songs each month, just songs that I was enjoying, and um, I stopped doing it just because I didn't have time, you know, I was busy with school and other things, but when I was making that chart, this was a song which consistently appeared on it as one of my favorite songs earlier in the year, and it stands as a great hit song from 2022. <laughs> I put Easy On Me on the list for last year because that song came out in 2021 and was a massive hit at the end of the year. But Oh My God started climbing the charts more in early 2022. And this was the single Adele released after. And I think it did a lot better in some other regions like Canada than it did in the US, but it still did decently here. And honestly, I completely see why because this type of Adele song is great. I always love Adele's more soulful stuff like Check Out River Lee from 25. That song is amazing. Um, and I just like how loose and fun this song is as a love song, and at the beginning of the year when I was entering a relationship, it definitely, you know, was something that resonated with me a bit, and it's just genuinely a great listen. The hand claps and every element of it makes it great. I really love the bridge as well, with the layered vocals here. And Adele, as always, sounds absolutely fantastic. But yeah, everything about this song is great. I don't think I really need to justify why Oh My God by Adele is a great and very refreshing song after listening to all of her breakup songs. Hearing a song where she's just excited to be entering into a relationship and just in love is a very refreshing take from Adele. And this is just a great sounding song. I love it. Great stuff. For the second gay song on the list, Yeah, this is the last single from Montero after, you know, I put both Montero Call Me By My Name and um, Industry Baby as tied at my number five spot of last year's list. And Lil Nas X is genuinely one of my favorite artists working. He's great. Unfortunately, Star Walkin' was kind of majorly disappointing, but this song is absolutely fantastic and Montero was a great record. As far as singles go, this was a song which started out, I started out liking and it just grew on me the more I heard it. I think this song does have a very similar appeal to Oh My God in a sense where it's just a song about being in love and just being happy but Lil Nas X adds an element of desperation to this which is really great and also this song is extremely gay whereas 
I, I don't see Adele being anything other than straight. That's not a knock to either of them, by the way. But, yeah. Um, Boyfriend was the lesbian song, and this is a gay song, and... But the reason I love the song is just because of Lil Nas X's delivery. He gets the desperation out there so well. And these really nice layered backing vocals. But I genuinely just really love Lil Nas X's voice. Like, when he sings and when he raps. He might not be technically that good, but just in terms of the way he can emote in his vocals. He's one of my favorite, like, pop vocalists currently working. I just absolutely love it. And that's all I can really say about that. Lil Nas X is brilliant, and I cannot wait till his next album. Doja Cat is a national treasure who needs to be protected at all costs. And honestly, everything Doja Cat makes turns to gold these days. I can barely find a song that I dislike by her. And this may be one of her best. I'm so glad that this song became a hit. Like, I first heard this in while watching the Elvis movie, which, while not perfect, was an absolutely wonderful cinematic experience. Seeing that on the big screen, Baz Luhrmann's filmmaking, his immaculate taste in music, just everything, just perfection. I will say this: that Baz Luhrmann has an incredible taste in music, but uh, that's a whole topic for another day. But yes, the Elvis movie was great, and I absolutely loved hearing Doja Cat. I was like, holy shit, is that Doja Cat? And it was. And this was easily my favorite song they did in the, in the, um, in the movie. And I, after that, I kind of forgot about it. I heard the single a few times, you know, I was like, this is a nice song. And then it slowly started climbing the charts several months later. And now this is one of my favorite songs of the year. Now, the brilliant interpolation of the original Hound Dog is great, but this song also just goes off Doja's charisma. This might be some of the most visceral and forceful Doja has sounded in a long time. Sure, I really loved her more subdued stuff like you write, but this song just slaps so hard. The beat's great. I love the descending melody on the chorus. It's great. And literally, Doja has so much charisma. She fits this type of song perfectly, and there's really no one doing it like her. Even with songs that I'm not a fan of, like Ain't Shit, I still just... It's a weird damn song. Like, Doja... Nobody is doing it like her. I know I put Doja on the list, on the worst list, with the Post Malone feature, but, like, that was because her feature was boring and nondescript, whereas every original song she does is just immaculate. Everything about this is fantastic, and I cannot wait to hear more like this in the future. felt like kind of a depressing year in music. It's not on the level of 2020, obviously, and but it just feels like there was a lot of people feeling down, and yeah, considering the state of the world, I don't blame them. A lot of breakup songs, a lot of sad stuff, just kind of a lot of angst in general, and yeah, I like depressing music. Not when it's poorly handled, like Deathbed by Palfu, but some of my favorite music is really fucking depressing. So, it's something that needs to be handled with care. I get really uncomfortable when depression is not tackled in a way that works, especially as someone who had a very not good year for a lot of reasons, especially the second half of the year, things started to fall apart. I went through a really messy breakup. There was a lot of drama in my school and just a whole bunch of other things happened. And I was so stressed and I felt like I was going insane and I was also felt like I was being the, you know, therapist to all my friends in a sense and everyone was just going through shit. And again, this is a topic that has to be handled with care, absolutely. I don't, like, 
if depression is mishandled, I will get genuinely angry, but, and they hold did it right. This was a song that I was certainly aware of earlier in the year, but I didn't really pay much attention to until I heard more people talking about it toward the end of the year. And I ended up giving this several listens before making this list to determine the placement. And yeah, this is excellent. I do tend to be more generous to Gen Z TikTok type songs than most people, but a lot of those things are just writing trends or trying to do something very basic and just doing it very poorly. Like, if you tackle a subject, a subject poorly or just tastelessly, you end up with something like this. TikTok music is cursed. But the thing is, is that, is that Numb Little Bug handles all of this so well, I can't even be angry because not only is this song extremely tastefully handled and just very fucking honest, it also sounds great. The strong hard hitting piano chords and just the element of the vocals. This reminds me a lot of late 2000s indie. And a lot of the artists I used to listen to, like Ingrid Michaelson or Sarah Bareilles, and yeah, this is absolutely excellent. The production on this sounds great. And just the, the sentiment of feeling numb or having empathy, but not being able to care about things going on in the world, and just is absolutely hard hitting. And it just is a song that is way too relatable, but it's not trying to be, it's just writing a song from the perspective of someone who's just been in that position and maybe some people can relate to it, but it's not trying to be hashtag relatable. And it doesn't compromise its artistic vision for being a trend writer. The song got popular because it's relatable to a real emotion and it's just a good sounding song. And yeah, I really hope to hear more from Mim Behold in the future. I'll definitely be checking her out. So yeah, great song. I had Pink Venom on my dishonorable mention, not because the song is bad, but because in retrospect, it was really fucking disappointing. It was all spectacle, absolutely no substance, which yeah, I get yeah, that's what Blackpink does, but Pink Venom was a mess of different ideas, and there's some really great sections and then a really bad chorus, and it's just, it's confusing more than anything. Like, the production is great, but also very out of place in some places, and yeah, this song was absolutely incredible when I first heard it. Uh, yes, of course, Black Blackpink, after a two-year wait, Stockholm Syndrome me into liking this, but is it good? Not particularly. And the funny thing is, when I first heard Shutdown, I thought that song was boring because it was just one melodic loop. And Pink Venom was the good and interesting song, but months later, I realized how fucking wrong I was. This is the best song Black Pink has ever made. Full stop. So, contracts are up this year in 2023, and... Things are looking dicey? Even if they do renew their contract, I'd be more concerned than anything about them just not getting comebacks or getting forgotten, because YG is debuting a new girl group, so yikes. They cannot they can't even manage the one group that they have. So yes, well I hope they get out of their contracts. Also, this could mean the end of the group, but if this is their last song, it's a damn good one. If you don't like Blackpink, you're not gonna like this. That's just kind of how it is, but as a longtime fan and as an enjoyer of bombastic shit, this song is absolutely great. It takes a classical violin loop and brings the girls around it with well immaculately produced trap production and literally every member of Blackpink just has so much charisma on this song. And they sound like they're having so much fun and this song is just an absolute blast. The rapping just pops off everything in this track, but 
part of the reason I do love this is because of the chorus. The chorus is great, unlike Pink Venom. The chorus is probably the best part of the song. It doesn't have that incredible bridge that Pink Venom has, but Pink Venom is a ton of peaks and valleys, where Shutdown is just one long 2 minute and 55 second burst of energy. Also, the lyrics are about, like, how Blackpink is seen in the media and shutting down the haters, so, yeah. Considering how much hate this group has gotten for completely unwarranted things. And I'm not saying people who just casually don't enjoy their music, I'm saying they've gotten some real fucking hate. A clapback like this is absolutely deserved. This is so much better than how you like that did it two years ago. Because this song sounds confident and not petty like how you like that. So yeah, Shutdown is Blackpink's best song. I don't care what anyone says. Blackpink is the revolution now and forever. And regardless of whether or not they stay together, their mark on K-pop and bringing that genre globally will not be understated. This song is really good. I wish that this was the biggest song of the year and not fucking heat waves, but whatever. I'll take what I can get. But yeah. I'm honestly surprised this didn't make the list because of how good this song is, but I think I'm just a tiny bit sick of it right now. This could really show up again in the future as being like one of my favorite songs or something, but at the moment it's just very old. But the song is still fantastic, so definitely check it out. Of course Lizzo gets the honorable mention. I'm sorry her spot was stolen by Dove Cameron, I feel like shit now, but... This song is absolutely fantastic. Again, depending on the day, my rankings could totally change. This could be number 5 someday. And this is absolutely my number 11. This would have been on my list if I didn't want to be controversial with boyfriends, so yeah. Encanto is like one of the best movies I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, okay, as a queer autistic person I resonate to it way too closely, but we don't talk about Bruno, it's just a really fun ensemble track. Which sets the villainy of this character, and it really explains how everyone feels about this character. And it works extremely well in the context of the film, as the big ensemble number. But I think the best part about We Don't Talk About Bruno is the part at the end, where everyone's parts start layering up on each other. Definitely one of the greatest Disney songs we've had in a long time. Not something I'd listen to as much out of context, but still fantastic. Okay, it grew on me. Next. Beyonce, ladies and gentlemen. House Music by Beyonce. You can't go wrong with this. Okay, I'm not like a Joji fan or anything, but this song is really pretty. I love the sparse piano, Joji sounds really good on it, and it's just a very good breakup song. It's like, depression core, but I love it. I didn't hear many people talk about this song at all, and some of the opinions I saw did see about it were negative, but I always liked this. It's got a really chill vibe, and just feels satisfying to listen to. I don't know how to explain it. This is just something I put on to chill out to. It's not a song that has some sort of profound thing, it's just a love song, but it's good. I want to be controversial again, but I told you I love overblown shit, so... Yeah, okay, I acknowledge the many, many flaws that this has, but if I said this wasn't extremely fun, I would be lying. More Sam Smith hyperpop, please. Beyonce, ladies and gentlemen. This song is just so good. I can't believe that this wasn't a hit as much as it should have been. I mean, yeah, it was still made the year end, but like... Come on! People do better! Now, this is probably the best song from Encanto, and honestly, this scene makes me tear up every time I watch it. This part of the movie is just excellent, and... 
as a song, it's really great. It does still have that Disney tan production a bit, but it's still great. Okay, I know this is gonna be very controversial, and I had a lot of reservations about putting this at number one. It was really hard for me to decide if I wanted to put Shut Down at number one, or even Vegas, or Numb Little Bug, or what song really should have uh, gone in the spot. But at the end of the day, this was the song that gave me the most euphoria. Yeah, okay, I'm a Camila Cabello apologist, I always have been, I'm a big fan. Psycho Freak was great, why was that not a hit again? But anyway, Bum Bum is not even close to the best song on Familia because fucking uh, La Buena Vida exists and Lola and everyone at this party and Celia. God damn, that album was good. Anyway, um, all I want to say is that sure, I think I ranked this track low because I was sick of it at the time when I rated the album, but like... Coming back to this at the end of the year, especially after going through a breakup myself, yeah, I see why this is novel, I see why Ed Sheeran and Camila Cabello shouldn't mix, but I always liked South of the Border and I like this too. But. Sure, I love the instrumentation, it feels warm, it feels fresh, it's a great summery type song. Ed and Camilla sound good on it. It's just got this happy vibe. It's about, you know, just dancing and just moving on from a hard situation. But the part which really got me was the bridge. This part is just so fun. Yeah, absolutely. Keep dancing, yeah. That final high note, despite it being Camilla Cabello core at its finest, it's just so euphoric. And honestly, sometimes you just need to pick me up. And despite how many good sad songs are on this list and how much depressing music I listen to in my free time. This song was what I needed in 2022. Here's to a better 2023, everyone. And thanks for watching.